Okay, so today we start a new series. Uh, we're going to learn book Halachas or Brachas. Uh, so we're going to cover Halachas on all of the kind of fruits, smells, etc. All right. So we continue with our Sefer Chofetz Chaim. Uh, and it says, one second. And it says, um, the, the, the big topic tell us for the subject benefit and today's topic helping others to improve. Okay. The first category of, uh, of, of constructive purpose is, um, is to help a person about whom one is speaking. So basically like, we want to, to speak to somebody who might affect that person for his own benefit. Right? There is a tendency among many uh, to ignore them the misconduct of others in favor of live and let, let live. So that's uh, what many people do. They just uh, pretend they, they do not see, right? So that's uh, absolutely wrong. Live and live, uh, let live and let live attitude. Let us first understand why the Torah rejects this attitude. Every person is born with a character flaws. So as we said before many times, there are no perfect people, but uh, uh, Torah told, uh, is, uh, is telling us uh, what, uh, what we, we need to change. Um, it is our mission of life to change, to grow, and strive to perfection and spirituality. We all want to rid ourselves of our own um, in, imperfections. People do, uh, do want to be good. What makes life so challenging is that um, negative character traits are blinding. Right, so everybody wants to be good, and everybody perceives themselves as good or very, very good. Right, they, they, they people do want to, as, as it says, that people do want to be good. Right, what makes a life challenging is that the negative character traits that are blind, so meaning a person do not, uh, people do not see the like, flaws, right. Uh, we, uh, we either lose sight of what our goals should be uh, or rationalize to the point that we simply cannot differentiate between night, uh, right and wrong. One of the greatest gifts uh, Hashem has blessed us with is uh, companionship. Friends, family, people around us uh, who are uh, close enough to care. Cl close and enough to, to care. Yet distance enough to be objective. So I mean, uh, uh, friends, family, right? People around us, they're close enough to care. So I mean, that they're going to, to tell us something that uh, they they think that we're doing wrong, right? And on the same time, to be objective. To abstain from speaking up and offending one another, uh, one uh, one. Um, uh, and very one another reproof and guidance um, and uh, guidance am amounts to deprive one one another of one of the most valuable tools for professional growth. Uh, let me read this sentence one more time. To abstain from speaking up, to abstain, meaning uh, when a person is not speaking up, and uh, uh, offering one another reproof. So when one person does not uh, talk to others, and then uh, does not uh, reprove him, right? does not rebuke him. And uh, guidance um, amounts to depriving one another of the most valuable tools for per personal growth. M meaning if we're not going to tell each other what's, uh, what is wrong with us and uh, how it looks uh, uh, from the side and uh, so, People basically never going to change, right? And it's a valuable tool, when, uh, especially when somebody is knowledgeable next to you and he's telling you what, uh, what he thinks is wrong. So we have to listen to them and that, that's how we, we can change. That's how we can grow. We must uh, get involved and when necessary, even um, enlist uh, the involvement of the others in helping people uh, through the struggles in life. Um, let me read one more time and try to explain. 
you must get involved. So I mean, uh, volunteer. So even uh, if they're not asked, right? Get involved, and when necessary, even enlist uh, uh, the involvement of other in, in helping people through the struggles of life. So sometimes our expertise, our um, uh, our like uh, relationship with a, with a person would not allow us to uh, or prevent us from uh, from rebu rebuke him or if we don't have enough experience, let's say. So we, sometimes we need to get uh, involved somebody else, right? But why? As we started, because we care, because we want to help other person. Um, re remaining silent when reproof is called for is not shmiras halashon. It is depriving one's fellow of his life lifeline to self improve. So that's very nice, right? I going to it one more time. We explain. Remaining silent when reproof is called for. So when a person, no, oh, he knows, he knows, he, he, he understands. So when he goes like this approach, um, right? Is not shmiras shown. It is deprived of one's fellow of his lifeline in a self improvement. So basically, it's not like you you you, you respect the person or something. So you, you actually like. Uh, he, um, you you remove it from a chance, you're uh, taking away from him a chance to ever to change. I just think. Okay. So we start. Yeah. Rabbi. Yes. Uh, yeah. Question. Uh, I, I think it was, uh, yeah, it was the Baal Shem who, who said that, let's say, when you, when you see something bad in another person, right? Uh, mm -hmm. you're, you're looking in a mirror or something like that, correct? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But my, my question is, when do we say that? And when do we say when a person rightfully judges someone that he's not doing correctly? Okay, so, so you, you're asking what is, the, what is the difference if uh, if I see this issue with him. So maybe uh, I have same uh, have uh, the same issue, correct? That's that's what you're asking. So should I, should, but basically should I rebuke him or uh, we should not rebuke him, right? That's that's the question. Exactly, because what's it called? Sometimes, because if you uh, judge a person uh, too harshly, wrongfully, for example, Hashem will judge you the same. So when when do you know what uh, how to? No, how but, to but judge? no, no, no. Let's say you you're not judging anyone. You're not judging anyone. You uh, that that's how we started today. You whatever you do, you're trying to do for for his good. Mm hmm. I understand. You're trying to 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 stay to to help the person. It's not like you you're against anybody against the person. The opposite is true. For example, me personally, if I don't do not care about somebody, I, I would keep quiet. I would not tell mm -hmm. him what, how long he's here. But if I care about someone, so I I would tell him even uh, some uh, minor things. Not not very small, but, uh, but I I will, I will try to tell him why because I care. You understand? That's a, that's a big difference. Understand. Okay, so let's see. So, so we start halachas um, so of I'm, uh, so we, we can skip the acknowledgement for a second. Okay, let's do preface. Okay. So preface. Um, Page number one. So it says the essence of Ogobracha. So right away we start this commentary. This uh, preface is based on a large, uh, to a large degree on an essay of Hagoon, Rav Shlomo Wolbi, in his Sefer Alai Shur. Okay. And on the writing of Rabbeinu Bachia. Although it is uh, entitled The Essence of Ogobracha, it does not uh, begin uh, begin to scratch the short surface of the profoundity of uh, that is embodied in a bracha. Okay, so let's uh, let's begin with Rav So it says that uh, don't know don't throw stones into a well from which you drink. It says in Talmud Bava Kama, page ninety two b. Okay, Rashi states since uh, the rivers uh, protected Moshe as an infant. The plague uh, where 
brought uh, uh, them by Moisha. One second. Okay, so one second. Let me join. Okay. So this was a disaster. So I'm, I'm going to read this uh, sentence one more time. So it says, um, so, so we just, we just start in the, in the book. So it says, um, Russia states, since the rivers protected Moshe as an infant, the plague um, were not brought upon them by Moshe. Rather, the plague of the blood, as well as the plague of the frogs, frogs were uh, inflicted through the arrow. So basically, it's a famous thing that um, um, since river, now river, right, it saved Moshe, so he was not allowed be ungrateful and uh, um, bring uh, curses uh, on them and through them. Okay, so Aaron, Aaron, his brother, had to do it. In a similar vein, Rashi explains the passage. And Hashem said to Moshe, say to Aaron, take uh, your staff and smite the sand. And there shall be lice and in the entire land of Egypt, as follows. It was not appropriate for the sand to have been smitted by Moshe because the sand uh, shielded him by concealing the body of the Egyptian whom he killed. The Torah is giving us a lesson of Derech Eretz. Don't throw stones into the well from which you drown. So basically that's another famous story uh, that uh, Moshe killed this Egyptian. No, no, physically he's, uh, he pronounced them the name of Hashem, and uh, but by this name he killed this Egyptian, and uh, the, the ground like uh, covered uh, covered the, the body of this Egyptian. So basically, in appreciation of this to the ground, right? So he was not uh, allowed to, to curse the ground. Okay. So talking about appreciation, basically, if, if somebody or something, in this case, it's inanimate objects, were good to you. Right, so you have to be grateful for that. Continue. The extent to which one is obligated to express his uh, appreciation is awesome. Water and sand are, are, um, are oblivious of the appreciation being expressed to them. Right? So I mean they don't have feelings, they don't have memory, they don't they, they don't understand, they right. So okay, so even water and, uh, and, and what is it? What did they say? The sand. Okay. If there is an obligation to show appreciation to inanimate objects, how much stronger is the obligation to show appreciation to human uh, to, to a human be benefactor? How much stronger still it, uh, uh, still is the obligation to express appreciation to Hashem, the uh, ultimate benefactor? So that's uh, I think the idea is very clear. So, uh, Learn from the Torah that uh, you have to be it's, uh, Moshe uh, showed appreciation to the to the water and to the sand. So needless to say, he and uh, we uh, we should uh, have appreciation to to human humans that uh, benefited us. A child of the tree can say thank you to his parent, especially if the parent instructs the child to do so. If the parent, uh, if the person grows in wisdom, as I'm sorry, as a person grows in wisdom, uh, experience and sensitivity, his appreciation deepens. And his expression of the gratitude are no longer something that, uh, that he does by road. As, uh, as a wise and sensitive adult, he can express his gratitude uh, in a meaningful way. So, okay, the three years old, they say thank you, train him like uh, many, many times. Uh, like uh, you see parents say, what, what should you say? They say, ah, thank you, right? So you see, okay, so parents do the right thing, the train person, but when, when he grows, see, I mean, he, he does need that reminder of his mommy when he's, I don't know, 20 years old. So he has to have his own wisdom and not only say thank you, but maybe repay to that person. In some way, right? Uh, many three year old children recite brachas. 
So from three years old, I mean, they already know a lot. If 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 you want this, then uh, um, what is the loss What what a loss opportunity? It would be if person express his direct gratitude to Hashem thousands of times in his lifetime with a sensitivity and a depth of three year old. <laughs> so basically, okay, the, the three year old can say bracha, but okay, his intention, I know he, he wants to eat, he wants to drink. So the parents told him to, to say the bracha. Okay, he after he he says this, uh, whatever he says, he does not understand. He can have this chocolate, right? So he, he's going to say whatever you want him to say. But adults should not be like that. Right? As, as it says, very beautifully say it. Uh, I'm, I'm going to read it again. It's beautifully it says, said. Um, uh, what, a, what is the worst opportunity it would be if a person express his gratitude to Hashem thousands of times in his lifetime with a sensitivity and depth of three-year-old. Uh, growth uh, starts simply considering uh, the meaning of the words uh, of Abraham. So, okay, you, you're three-year-old. You, you start with just pronouncing the word, trying to, to remember what uh, what, what uh, bracha to, to, to me. But... Uh, Later on, you're supposed to, to learn what these words mean. The words of Baruch Hata, Baruch Hata are often misunderstood uh, to, to, to mean bless you, okay, or praise you, Hashem. To, to presume that Hashem could benefit from our, our praise uh, is completely illogical. Would... Uh, would um, would we take a notice of a compliment being offered to us by a microbe? The Rishonim explained that the word Baruch, uh, used in Bracha, means source and a wellspring of, for example, you Hashem are the source of bread, you Hashem are the source of fruit, etc. So, okay, so we're going into the words of the Bracha. So, I mean, uh, that, but, uh, that, that's how uh, all the Siddurs uh, translate. Blessed are you, blessed are you. No, no, not, not bless you, but uh, I think that they, uh, they translate blessed, blessed are you. Right? So, of course, Hashem does not need our praises. He knows well what he's doing. He's very good uh, uh, with or without us. He knows what to do. Right? Um, so one more time, the, the second part, the Shanim explained that the words Baruch, um, you use in the means the source or and the wellspring. Of, uh, for example, uh, Yu Hashem is the source of bread, Yu Hashem are the source of the fruit and serpent. Hashem's name is written Yu K Vav K, so there are four letters, right? Uh, which signifies he was, he is, and he will be always. And he will will always be. So I mean, it's a side point that, but uh, we we never spoke about it. But that's what uh, these four letters uh, mean: U U K L F K, right? So if you like sp split in, 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 into different words, that's what they mean: that he was, he is, and he will be. Um, it is uh, it is recited adoy which uh, uh, signifies master of all. Okay. Many poskim rule that upon saying Hashem's name, one must, um, one must be mindful of both meaning of his name. For uh, there is, he was, he is, uh, and he will be, and the master of all. Okay, so many poskim say, so when, when you say Adoi, right, so what, what, what should you should, should think that he, he was, he is, and he will be, and plus that he is a master of all. <laughs> the word Elakeinu, our God, means that he is almighty, or capable, or, and all-powerful. According to many Paschim, one is required to be mindful of this meaning each and every time he recites the word Elakeinu in a bracha. So don't, don't, don't just speak the bracha like a, like a uh, like Can I ask I something? Yeah, go ahead. 
Um, in the when I wake uh, wake up, I I read that uh, you cannot uh, pronounce uh, any name of, of Hashem uh, yeah. without uh, doing netilat yadaim. Uh, so yes. Modeani does not include this name of any name yes. of Hashem. Yes, yes, yes. So yes. you must uh, must you uh, wash your uh, your teeth before saying yeah. any name of yes, yes, correct, yes. And which uh, which of these names uh, applies? E every name, every uh, language. All, all, all of the names, all of the names. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Rabbi. Okay. Yes. Uh, do you have to, uh, I, I read in Halakha that someone uh, can, uh, can, say Hashem, uh, can say the brachas uh, while he's in bed if he was, uh, uh, what's it called, if he was sleeping with his clothes on because he didn't touch, uh, it's, it's assumed that he didn't touch uh, anything bad. So my, my question is like this, but uh, he didn't do Nathil Sadaim yet and he still has uh uh, demons on his hands or whatever, so it's not a problem. No, it uh, it depends when uh, when did it happen. For example, uh, so the, the, in the last year then we have to uh, we have to wash our hands only in the morning. So if he woke up in, in the middle of the night, he went to the bathroom, for example, and he came back, so he can say Asher uh, Yotzer in the bed. Mm -hmm. well, so, but uh, those are two, two, two different things. He 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 asked uh, about when a person wakes up. So in this case, in this case, you need to wash your hands and wash your mouth. And it's the same uh, in the middle of the night. So if you have like a bad taste in in the mouth, right? Or for example, other words, somebody is sick, right? So he's uh, he's uh, he has uh, I don't know this uh, um, uh, uh, sore throat. Right, and he has all of the like, bad, uh, bad, uh, bad taste in the mouth. So you, you cannot say Hashem's name with uh, with this thing. You have to uh, rinse your mouth and then uh, then say Hashem's name. Uh, uh, you, sorry, if if it, does it is the same if you, we think the the blessing or the yes. uh, little yeah, prayer? Yeah. Exactly. So I mean, we we we're going to get to it, but uh, just to answer the question. So when you say the blessing, your, your mouth should be empty from all of these things. So you have to saliva, so you have to swallow saliva. It's something bad, so you have to spit out the, the, the bad. But you you cannot say like when, when uh, you feel disgusting in your mouth and uh, you, you cannot pronounce Hashem's name. So the, the proper way, I would say, just, just go rinse your mouth. Like if it's in the middle of the night, for example, you went to the bathroom. And uh, now you want to, to say uh, this blessing after the bathroom. So rinse uh, your mouth and then and say the blessing. You don't have to brush with this, but, but at least like fresh water. If it's uh, freshen up your, your, your breath, that's enough. Wait, Rabbi, Rabbi but uh, let's, let's say there's no problem in, in your mouth or anything. Like let's say there's no uh, like dry saliva or something nasty. You still have to wash out your mouth? No, no, you, you're not. About, I, 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 I say if uh, if if there is a bad taste in the mouth, so you you okay. should not say. But, but if if there is like uh, I don't know, let, let's say you slept uh, I don't know 15, 20 minutes, and then you you feel the urge to go to the bathroom, you will not have the bad taste after twenty minutes, right? So in, in this case, you then you're not obligated. To. There's no problem. Understood. Okay, so so where we go, we see we, we go very deeply word by word. We try to, to understand. So let, let, let me read this uh, Elakeinu one more time. Uh, the, this paragraph of Elakeinu. The word Elakeinu, our God, means that he's almighty, all capable, all powerful, according to many paskim. One is required to be mindful of the meaning each and every time when he recites the word Elakeinu and Abraham. Right? Each and every time. When he says Melech Koelan, uh, king, king of the universe, right? We address um, uh, we address the fact that uh, not only did Hashem create the particular item that uh, we are about to eat, but He actively managed uh, its location 
and, it, and a distribution. Figuratively speaking, the creator stamps every apple with address and uh, of the person for whom it is intended. So when, when we say like uh, there is a melech or a lamp, so, so we, we say Hashem created this uh, uh, this apple, well, let's say we're talking about apple, and he sustained the tree, and he and he did everything to, to preserve this apple until it came all the way to, to me. You understand? So it's a, when, when we say this blessing, we have to have a, the complete picture in mind. Okay? Uh, so let's see, did I miss anything? Okay, continue. In a, in a closing phrase of the bracha, the form of the verb uh, indicates that the action took place in the past and are currently taking place. Okay, so, for example, the word bore does not mean he created, but rather he created and continues to create. So, I mean, in English, uh, there is no, no, no such a thing, but, uh, okay. You read so okay, so uh, so Bore meaning that he created and he continues to create. What we are saying is that Hashem not only created the universe and all it contains, but also continues to actively cause it to exist. So that's a very important uh, uh, principle in Judaism that Hashem recreates the whole universe like every second, right? And uh, everything, every second. If for a fraction of a second, he, meaning Hashem, were to stop a willing <laughs> everything into being, so of course he, he does not create like a, in a physical sense, but will, just in his mind, uh, whatever it means, in his mind, he's willing, whatever it means, we're not going to go into it now, right? Uh, so if he, uh, for one second, decided not, not to will, so everybody is going to, uh, stop basically the whole uh, the whole world is going to stop. Right? Then people, matter, and the entire universe would simply disappear into nothingness. Okay, that's uh, if he would stop for one second. So there is one counter. This concept of what the what uh, what would happen if Hashem were to stop willing us into existence is the best uh, best illustrated by the following example. An old man is having a dream. In his dream, two people are having a conversation. Okay, so let's see. Uh, the first person uh, is, uh, is discussing his house, the neighborhood and a problem uh, he is encountering with one of his children's teacher, teachers. The second person uh, talks about a new car, the challenges at work and possibly moving to another state. Suddenly, a thought flashes through the second person's mind, and he breaks out of the, uh, in a cold sweat. Do you realize, he said, that our houses, our jobs, our cars, our families, our whole world is in jeopardy? We exist only if, um, if this old man's dream. As soon as he wakes up, uh, our, um, as soon as he wakes up, our existence is over. So it's, uh, I think it's very interesting, like, uh, um, very in interesting example, right? So, so they say, like, uh, two, uh, two people, a uh, 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 person has a dream, and then two people in his dream, so they, they discover things, but they, they understand themselves that they're part of his dream. Okay, so, the, and they realize as soon as the, this guy wakes up, that's it, they, they're out completely. Matter, energy, and universe is continuously being, uh, being willed into existence by Hashem. Uh, were he to decide not to do so, we like uh, the people in a dream would simply cease being. Okay, so I think it's a good explanation. So continue. One second. It's the next page. Yeah, it's the next page. Okay, continue. Thus, um, the remark remarkable opportunity exists to express one, one's gratitude in a profound and meaningful way, simply by understanding the meaning of the words being recited. So how we should express our gratitude. First, of course, you 
have to say bracha, uh, even if you do not understand. So you, you can do it in your own language, there is no problem, right? But uh, the goal is to understand exactly what, uh, what we're saying. The Talmud um, refers uh, to yet another dimension of the making brach brachas. Making a bracha sets into effect the mechanism which causes shefa, abundance, plenty, shefa is abundant, uh, to be uh, released to a mankind. So every time we say thanks, so it's not only to us, but to the whole mankind. When a righteous person makes a barat liha aids, for example, the food crops uh, uh, becomes plentiful. It's actually, um, it's, uh, it's, uh, that's what I learned in uh, the business group. It's Nisla Sesharim, chapter 26. That's, uh, he, he's speaking about this. When, uh, when a righteous person makes a bracha, it's uh, the whole uh, fruit uh, crop uh, becomes plentiful. So it's blessing uh, on everything. Okay. So it's, it's not only uh, being grateful, but also you, you bless the whole, uh, um, uh, the whole crops. Okay, continue. Reb, uh, Reb Hanina Bar Papa, Reb Hanina Bar Papa said, anyone who derives pleasure from this world without making bracha is in a sense stealing from Hashem, stealing from his fellow Jew and, uh, and a comrade of uh, Yeravam Ben Nivat. <laughs> okay, so let, let's try that on the sense. So Rafael by Papa said, so everyone does not say bracha. He's stealing from Hashem because uh, because you know, why, why he's stealing? The way I understand is uh, because uh, he when, when we thank Hashem, we acknowledge that it is His and He gave it to us. Okay, I worked, I uh, I sweat and uh, and I, I went to the store. I, I, I got. I had the money from my job and I went to the store and bought it. Okay, it's, it's all very good. But after all, uh, Hashem actually produced it, right? And he made me uh, able to go to work, to make this money, to go to the store and stuff like that, okay? So but when he is not grateful and he does not acknowledge that it came from Hashem, so it's still from Hashem, still from his fellow Jew, meaning uh, that uh, there is no blessing from the produce. And compare uh, in a comrade of Yeravam bin Nevat. So Yeravam bin Nevat, I think it, uh, if I remember correctly, see, he was uh, the first king in you know, the Northern Kingdom. Yeravam, uh, one of the Shlomo's ministers, became king with the large part of the nation that revolted against uh, King Shlomo's son. Uh, Yeravam introduced idol worship in, an, uh, in a Jewish nation. So it's like the, the first idol worshiper, I think he was uh, from, um, from, uh, fr uh, from the tribe of a tribe. Right? And uh, I mean, b before that, in, in, the uh, in times of the Shlomo, so everybody were religious, but this guy, he's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's, it's a long story, but but basically he introduced the idol worship because he was uh, he, he was afraid of his position if people would go to Yerushalayim. Okay. So continue. Yeravam's philosophy, many um, autonomous, for, uh, autonomous forces govern worldly events. So he said there is uh, not only Hashem, but uh, there is uh, some other forces. These forces were not subject to Hashem direct control. When one takes food without making a bracha, he's demonstrated that he's, uh, he subscribed to the similar philosophy, right? So he said it was Hashem and plus the golden calf and, uh, and other things. So basically there are many things that uh, govern the world, okay? It is as if he is saying that the food in, uh, in evolved naturally. He's declaring that uh, autonomous force called the nature rather than direct management of Hashem, produce the food which he is eating. So nature is a, is a part of Hashem, Teva, right? I think it's, uh, Teva is nature, I think it's uh, Gematri 72, or 71, but we count as 72, which is the name of Hashem. Uh, Yeravam is synonymous uh, with, one of the uh, with one who transgresses and causes others to transgress. So meaning that, that he put these uh, two golden 
uh, cows, one in, uh, in, in, in the south of his kingdom and one in the north, or all the way, in, I think it was in Dan, Dan's territory, and people worship them. Says Rashi, a person who do, uh, do not make a bracha invariably causes others to do the same. Um, maybe they, they see him not making the bracha. I'm not sure uh, what uh, uh, that, that's, uh, that's what I think. Okay, so continue to see. One second, one second. By, by neglecting him to make a bracha, he not only withholds the uh, expression of gratitude to, due to Hashem, he also causes to, uh, the flow of the abundance to be withheld from his fellow Jew. Okay, so it's not only he being uh, ungrateful, it's, uh, uh, as I say, he, the, the, all, other, all other people also suffer. The, so the way I understand, so when Hashem created this apple, this apple was not created by itself. It was created on an apple tree. Right, so and uh, and may, many other people were supposed to benefit from it uh, properly until this guy uh, decided not to say brah. Okay, continue. Many people aspire to become Yeresha Mai. So, aspire meaning that, that many people want, they, they, they found this idea like very, very interesting, and that's what they want to do. Aspire to become Yeresha Mai. Hazal analyzes the passage. And you, Israel, what does Hashem uh, uh, ask of you? But to fear Hashem your God. So, I mean, uh, yeah. So, uh, I think it's Moshe speaking. So, he said that uh, um, uh, what, like, it's, it's, a, it's, it's only a small thing. Well, what Hashem wants for just, just to be God fearing people. What, what else? I mean, it's such an easy thing. So, uh, I, I think our uh, Rashi or I think it's Russia explained. So since uh, he was on such a great level of God feeling, so for him it was so obvious. I mean, we have to work on it uh, because, uh, as Rabbi Rubin said many many times, uh, uh, fear, fear of God is not uh, is the only fear that is not natural to a person. All the other fears are natural. We we afraid of uh, I don't know bugs, spiders, or snakes, uh, dogs, uh, like I don't know. Wild animals, uh, all the other uh, uh, things, uh, terrorists, all the viruses and stuff like that, they, it's all natural. But afraid of Hashem is not natural. So that's, uh, that's why people have to work on it. But for, for Moshe, it was obvious, right? So, <laughs> right? so he, one, one more time, he said, uh, and now Israel, what, uh, what does uh, Hashem ask of you? But to fear uh, Hashem, your God. And derive from it that one is obligated to make at least 100 brachas a day. Right? Um, okay, continue. Does the frequent act of making a bracha, when done correctly, is a full uh, foolproof means for the instilling in oneself Yeras Shomai? Okay, so it's all connected. So 100 brachas um, a day. Um, Others say is uh, one hundred blessing came from David actually, right when people were dying. So he instituted to, to say one hundred blessings. Hello, right. question. Um, so it's better not to say in in blessing. I mean, uh, say every time we 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 eat something, apple, bread, whatever. We we must say every time because sometimes. For example, Rav Revan said, I made uh, the bracha before for water. Mm -hmm. uh, but for example, for other uh, food, uh, apple or bread or, or vegetable, uh, we must, uh, must we say every time it's, it's better? No, no, it's, uh, I, don't, I don't have simple answer to a question. So uh, we have to learn in this book, we're going to say in some uh, in some uh, uh, cases, you are required to say separate bracha. In some cases, it's absolutely forbidden to say extra bracha. And uh, some brachas, when we say on this, on this, let's say it's going to cover this food, 
but uh, but in some cases you you say of this and it is going to exclude others. So it's not there is no simple one line answer to the question. For, so for example, okay. if I made uh, I eat a vegetable, I made a bracha, and then uh, at uh, this was midday. Then uh, at, at noon and evening, I ate uh, again vegetables. I yes. can say I made the bracha before and not. No, no, the... no, 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 no. Those are two, two different meals, so you have to say uh, uh, different brachas. Yes, this is uh, this is clear case. Okay, okay. So, but uh, what, what bracha to make? For for example, if you have uh, apple and banana, and you have. Uh, on a T. So what uh, what bracha to make and in what sequence? That's that's what we're going to learn in this book. That's uh, that's why we picked this book because it's uh, very important to know all the details. Okay. So so okay. So what what we said so far? I mean, and then, not so far. I mean, this paragraph that uh, the person should strive to to make a hundred brachas and. Uh, it should bring him to So basically what, what we're trying to say, to, of course, to, to say unnecessary bracha is very bad. So it's better for a person not to make bracha, like in a, in, in a case of the doubt, right, than to make unnecessary bracha. Okay, so it's like uh, we have to be, like, we have to be careful. Continue. There is a big task that has been uh, hand, uh, handed to us. The obligation to pause and focus on reality at least 100 times a day, at least. The reality that uh, Hashem was, is and always will be, uh, that he gave us to our bodies and our souls. Our Torah uh, and, our, our, um, and, and our mitzvahs. There is a he who continuously wills, wills us and every atom in the um, of the matter of ex into existence. And it is he who is the constantly showering us with, uh, with pleasures. Okay, so what does it say here? Um, so, okay, let, let, let me read. One more time, maybe we'll explain one line by line because it's a lot of information here. It is a big task uh, that um, that has been uh, that has been handed to us: the obligation to pause and focus on reality at least one hundred times a day. So this one hundred times a day, and it's it's not only blessing some food. Don't uh, don't don't take it wrong. So it's not like you know, that you have to eat uh, the whole day. No, it's. Uh, all of the blessings mean means up to the bathroom is a blessing, uh, morning blessings. Uh, when we say Shmona Esther, we have blessings, right? So if you if you pray Shmona Esther three times a day, so it's uh, three times nineteen, right? If you listen to repetition of the Hazim, uh, you have another one. In another was it um, uh, twenty eight, right? So I mean. Uh, and plus, uh, plus you, 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 you answer to Kaddish and stuff like that. So all of these things are actually counted. Okay, so to, to the number of 100. Continue. The reality that Hashem was, is, and always will be, and He gave uh, our bodies and our souls, our Torah, and, and our mitzvahs. That, uh, that it is He who is continuing wills us, and, and every atom of the matter into existence. And it is he who, who is constantly showering us with pleasure. So if you start from the beginning, the sense so first of all, we have to understand that, that he, 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 he gives us uh, all these pleasures and we have to be grateful, right? And uh, not only he gives us pleasure, but he, he gives us uh, opportunity to, to enjoy all of these pleasures, right? So, for example, if uh, he personally is uh, has money to, to eat good food, but but he, he he's very sick, right? So the, the, this food is not good for him, or I don't know, or he, he cannot enjoy it, or he cannot chew, or I don't know what, what's going on with this person. So 
So, so we have to be grateful for all of these things combined. It is our obligation to seize these profound opportunities and to use them to, to express our acknowledgement of the gratitude in a bracha, meaningful, in a, mean, in a mean, meaningful way. So basically, like every, every time when we say bracha, we have to understand what's going on, what, how, how many things, small, little, tiny things uh, Hashem had to take care of for us to be able to, to enjoy this morning, moment. Okay. Okay, next piece uh, on studying Hilchas Brachas. Hilchas is, is uh, loss, loss, right? Hilchas Brachas. Laws of the Brachas. The Talmud state, one who uh, derives benefit from this world without for making a Bracha is Mo'al, guilty and sinful, uh, sinfully, um, embezzling from Hashem. So, person who derives benefit from this world, so any 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 physical benefit, right? Um, the derives a benefit from this world without making a bracha is a guilty of sinful embezzling from Hashem. What is the remedy? Let him go to someone who can teach him kill his brachas, so that he may avoid the embezzlement before uh, the, before the this, uh, before he starts. So basically, when uh, so the, the question is asked, okay, so so if I don't know what the, the bracha to say, first of all, buy this book, right? Uh, and uh, at the end, uh, it says uh, what bracha to make on each food, or buy a, a similar book. I think Rabbi Rubin, uh, uh, he, he recommended a different book. But I, I have I have this book, so it's uh, um, doesn't matter. So you 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 you, 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 um, you find the Talmud Chacham. You 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 find somebody. You have to find a source from whom you you can learn what bracha to make. Basically, that that's what it says. So if you do not know, so don't eat until you learn what bracha to make. Very simple. The Maharsha explained that that this um, this uh, pronouncement was made specifically with regard to the study of Birchas uh, Han, Hanechanim, the bracha made on food, a drink, and smell. So that's when we say enjoyment, that's uh, physical, that's what it means. Food, drink, and smell. Since there are many uh, intricates, uh, intricacies involved in their use. So as we said, uh, this book, uh, of course, it's uh, English, it's he, in Hebrew, so I'm not sure how many books, 500 pages more, 600, like, a lot of pages, basically, on what bracha to make. Okay. When making a birchas chanech chenim, and sorted this over the sunrise, whether the wrong bracha is made. So, I mean, he, he was not sure was it made of, right? In these cases, it is uh, as if he has not made the bracha at all. If he does not know, or worse yet, the bracha is bracha levatala, like extra, right? And not extra, an unnecessary bracha. Therefore, let the study of Hilchas let him study the Hilchas brachas and review his studies until he becomes proficient in these halachas. So, so if he, for example, if he has to make three brachas on whatever he eats, right? So he has to make three brachas. If he made two. Brachas instead of three, and uh, none, none of them cover uh, whatever the, the, the third food that uh, uh, that he ate, so he stole from Hashem. Okay. So let me see. Because there's some, uh, a question here. Go ahead. Uh, so, as far as I understood, it's worse to say God's name in vain to. Yes than to maybe stealing when eating and, and we are unsure? Yes. Uh, so so it's, a, it's, actually, yeah, it's, it's actually one of the Ten Commandments, not to take the name of uh, you got uh, in way. And so stealing comes next, after. Yes, yeah, still, still, but, but still, it's still there. In, uh, it's, not, it's not exactly stealing. Uh, I mean, uh, in, uh, 
because yeah. Rap Red yeah, said yeah. That, that is it is uh, better not to say God's name in vain. He, he said that in in a show. Exactly. So I mean, it's uh, on in, in some sense, it's like Cage Twenty Two, right? So you you have to say Brah, but you said to you have to say correct Brah. So basically, that uh, that's why we learn. So sometimes you you're not sure. So before you you eat, you, you can check. Uh, today we have different resources. So in olden days, you would go to rabbi or you go to somebody knowledgeable and ask him a question. So today, many times you have uh, uh, this, uh, you, you have books or you have uh, uh, reliable web websites. But when you have check, you, you can check what, what, what blessing to me, right? Or to today, for example, you can, uh, you can contact the cash agency, whoever cash uh, that uh, item, because, um, right, and you you can ask them what what bracha to make. So sometimes it's not clear what bracha to make, and they, they have to tell you what bracha to make. You understand? But but you you cannot start eating until you you, you determine what bracha to make. If you that's all food you have, and it's pikuach nefesh, that's a different story. But other like uh, uh, like a rabbi <laughs> says. Uh, so the, the, this example many many times that somebody uh, send him a, send him a wrapper from a candy I don't know from what and then he and he said uh, and uh, the, this person asked is it kosher? So <laughs> Rabbi Ruben asked like what 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 happened to the candy? But the, this guy said no no I ate. It. So first you ate and then you ask no that's not Jewish way. First we we try to investigate we try to. To, to understand what bracha to make, and then you eat, right? So, of course, that there is a, in a case of the need, you say shahako, uh, that uh, you should cover everything, but it's only like uh, uh, when, when you have no no choice and there is no way for you to check, for example, today is Shabbos, today is holidays, and uh, there is the only food available in, and you're not sure. But otherwise, I go it, through it this. Yeah. Uh, not very clear for me uh, when we have clear, for example, uh, po uh, yes, uh, potato and other mixture. Uh, if we can say um, all the bra the brachot. This is so again. When we have potato, with what mix with what? Um, mixture with, for example, potatoes, uh, fish, tomatoes. Uh, Olives, uh, we can can we say uh, all the brachas needed or one is enough? It it depends if it's a one dish, for example. I don't know. Maybe, maybe we'll take take out the the tomatoes, so uh, potato with fish. I don't know. Is it some such kind of salad? I don't know. Maybe maybe maybe, maybe there, there is such uh, such a salad. So. Uh, we're going to learn uh, later on. So in, in some cases, yes, you say one bracha on, on a majority, right? But if, but in some cases, so if you if you like fish better and fish is minority, right? So you you say on a, on a fish. So it, it, we're going to, to get into details, but it's it's not so straightforward. So I mean, a, many 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 things uh, straightforward. And many depends on uh, on your personal preference. You understand? Okay, so we can stop here. So any questions on this subject? Different, please go ahead. Uh, different topic, may? Go ahead, yes, yeah, go ahead, yes. Uh, about the the Mashiach, will he be, will he be able to get inside the Bet Hamikdash or like a coin? Uh, he cannot be a coin be, be, because we know that, that he's a king. King uh, kings uh, come from Yehuda, right? But uh, he would be able to purify people. That's a different story. I think uh, Eliyahu Hanavi, who is an angel and uh, an angel and a person, he would be able to uh, uh, purify Mashiach, and Mashiach would be able uh, to purify the rest of the people. I think. That's uh, at least he, he doesn't need to, to, to do the rest of the people, just the Kohenim. And Kohenim can finish the job. So that, that's we, we just need to start. That's why we need the uh, Eliyahu Manavi. 
And I, I ask this as uh, half human, half angel, that's uh, and who, who never died. Otherwise, all of, all of the people impure. So you impure people cannot purify other people. So we need somebody who is alive, who is a human, and who is pure. And it's only Eliyahu Go ahead. And I, I ask this because uh, I read that uh, when all Jews uh, were going to Beit Hamikdash, they were allowed to to certain extent uh, a certain section of the of the temple, not yes. uh, every section. Exactly, so exactly. I was wondering if the Mashiach will be able to to access every 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 corner of the I, temple. I don't, I don't think so. No, no, the, the laws do not change. Only the coin. He, he is not a coin. He is not oh. a coin. He is not a lady. He's a king. So uh, there is some, uh, some prerogatives for a king. King is the only king of, from the tribe of Yehuda. He's the only one who is allowed to sit in, 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 in a court of the, of the, of the Be Beis Amikdash. That's it. That's the only difference. All other people must stand. So if somebody is weak, so okay, so stay home. What can we do? Today in the synagogue, if, you, if some, somebody was weak and they taken the Torah, scroll out everybody must rise that's uh, right so uh, when when torah is is an, uh, in, in the motion right but uh, there's weak people that they, they can see it i mean uh, it's not their fault or elderly people they, i mean weak elderly yeah. but uh but in, in the base i mean there's basically if you're weak if you cannot stand okay so stay home uh, this was uh i i'm not sure which which holiday or event is this when people from all over Israel came to the Beit Hamikdash, mm -hmm. and I remember now that uh, it it was told that even the king must, uh, at certain point, must be uh, take some caution. He he must take what I didn't get some some, some uh, pre precaution or caution or something like, like that. What? Um, it's, I'm not I'm not I'm not sure how to to express this, but uh, the stories say that he was uh, carrying something like a regular person inside the Beit Hamikdash. And what? Uh, yeah, it's okay. So he was carrying, and so what? I, I didn't get. Uh, uh, and so th then I I wondered uh, I wonder again this question uh, if uh, Mashiach will be able to access uh, sections of the temple that are allowed only to the Kohanim. No, 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 no. The, the, the laws do not change. The laws do not change. This laws of the Torah they given us they were given us forever until the end of the days. Okay. What else? All right, so if I uh, have no more questions, so let's stop here. So until this Sunday, so Sunday probably we're going to do class a little earlier. So we'll see, we will talk. And Sunday is, is a night, actually, Ashana Rabba, when they learn uh, uh, the whole night. So they do not Hashem. So from Sunday to Monday, we stay up the whole night. So we, we, we're going to talk, right? So let's stop here. Let me stop recording. אני מברך את הרבנים, הרב ירון ראובן, הרב אפרים כחלון, ראשי רגעו בעזרת השם, שערכו בפעליון, שעלו מעלה מעלה, יהיה להם ברכה והצלחה, קדוש ברוך הוא ימלא בשלות ליבם, לטובה ולברכה, שבכל אשר יפנו, יזכירו ויצליחו, יזכירו לעשות כאלה וכאלה, ודיעו תורה לאדירה, אמן ואמן.
הוא היהודי הזה, הוא היה מיליונר, סגר את כל הביזנס, אמר אני משקיע פה בעולמה של תורה. איפה הוא גר? בפלורידה. פלורידה, איפה זה פלורידה? אמריקה. כן, ליד. אנחנו שם עכשיו הולכים להקים קהילה ספרדית. חזק אותו בשמי. קהילה ספרדית גדולה. תעביר לו מה שבירכתי אותו. כן. תעביר לו. קהילה ספרדית גדולה.